All right. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Douglas. I'm here on campus in UC Berkeley. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a project that we're calling the cell scope. And the idea is to do uh, telemicroscopy. We've heard a lot about some other um, uh, approaches to, to, to telemedicine, but I hope to convince you that microscopy is another application that uh, could really benefit from, from uh, being able to be done remotely. So um, light, light microscopy is a, is a you know, central tool for, for diagnostics. Um, you know, you show up at a doctor's office, as in the Simpsons here, and uh, he's got a variety of tools he can use for, for diagnosis, but you know, we've, we've probably all had you know, fluids or biopsy samples um, analyzed via microscopy, which then leads to uh, you know the uh, course of treatment based on that. Um, you know, and there's there's a lot of different tests that that you can often do for the same you know the same possible disease, but uh, microscopy is is oftentimes the 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 gold standard for really identifying what the problem is, um, which is which is great if you have a microscope like this. You know, this is an an example of of a system that you know could be used in a clinic. These are uh, these are very powerful and very expensive, and uh, the way you know it, it often works, say, for a blood smear, is um, you know somebody draws a sample of blood, which um, is then processed on a slide. There's some staining, and uh, based on the staining and the analysis in the microscope, they're able to detect you know what's what's present in the blood. Um, for example, this is a this is a, a malaria slide, and you can see you know so here are the here are the blood cells, and then here within there, you can see the little uh, malaria parasites lighting up in, in blue. Which you know the way that that this would take place here would be you know in the in the same way they they take that blood sample, they'd stain it. Um, there'd be you know someone with a lot of training and, and experience whose uh, job it is to, to process this sample and you know detect whether or not the bugs are in the cells. Um, but that takes a lot of a lot of infrastructure. It takes both that that expertise, and it also takes you know those those expensive microscopes. Um, the thing about malaria is that it doesn't tend to overlap with where that infrastructure exists, right? So here's a here's a map that we borrowed from the UN Millennium Project showing the uh, global distribution of, of of physicians. So per per thousand people in the in the U.S. and Europe and Russia and you know a lot, a lot of other places we have. A good number of doctors, over two and a half doctors uh, per thousand people. But you can see that in a lot of places, you know, especially uh, Central Africa, there there are quite a bit fewer. Um, I'm going to talk some more in a in a few minutes about um, an experience in Congo. But in in uh, Eastern uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, where I was working, there are uh, about one doctor per 160,000 people, which is it's pretty staggering. I mean, we're you know in in Berkeley, where we are right now, it's a city of about 160,000 people. That'd be like if we had one doctor that treated all of Berkeley. You know, could, could you imagine the chaos? Or if we had, say, five doctors for San Francisco. And if we had you know, an earthquake once a month, an ongoing civil war, and a lot of the other things that, that uh, are at play in some of these places. So what, what um, our group has, has proposed and is, is working on to address this need uh, we're, we're calling um, the cell scope, which is for uh, cell phone-based telemicroscopy, which would, you know, we would have uh, a healthcare worker somewhere, somewhere remote, somewhere where they don't have the same you know, level of, of diagnostic infrastructure, be able to take a sample, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into the, the prototype a little more in a minute, but be able to take a sample and analyze, you know, take, take, the, uh, take the, mic the, um, the microscopy images that are of, of you know, diagnostic quality using the camera on the cell phone uh, microscope attachment, and then possibly um, either process that directly on the phone using you know the phones are in, increasing in, in processing power, or to be able to use the cell phone network, which is which is great in a lot of these places, um, to be able to transmit those images, where you know in in the cases where it does really requ require a you know trained diagnostician to analyze the images. And that could be used both for you know the the initial diagnosis and for um, ongoing monitoring of some of these conditions. So this is this is kind of the concept drawing um, we've got here. So there's you know off the shelf uh, cell phone that that we've been working with from from Nokia, and um, you know we we made this sort of holster for the phone that uh, um, it, it was it was actually based on a 
based on a belt clip, you know, so it's so a very sort of readily accessible technology. Um, and, uh, you know, applied, applied some microscope lenses uh, to, you know, turn this, turn this cell phone camera into a, into a diagnostic platform technology. Um, and then having the slide holder on the end there, being able to work within the same sort of diagnostic regime of, you know, taking the blood sample or sputum sample or whatever, putting that in the slide and analyzing that with the, the cell phone microscope. Uh, this was our, our initial prototype where, you know, done in the lab, we've got our, our optical breadboard set up so that we can, you know, move all our components around, get the focal lengths just right, um, which, you know, is a, is a little cumbersome to, to take on a field test. So we, uh, but we, we, we uh, demonstrated the initial feasibility with, with prototypes like this and then went on to develop uh, this prototype, which, which we've actually taken out, which is, you know, that, that, that same concept drawing in reality, we've got a hand model here with the, uh, with the phone, this longer tube lens to account for the you know, off-the-shelf optics, and then uh, a sample holder down at the end. And we've been able to, to get some really nice quality images that uh, I'll come to in a second. And so this is, this is an example of the, of, of the high magnification uh, application. You know, a, a lot of these, malaria, for example, you, you want you know, 60, 100x magnification. Um, in some, in some instances, you know, you want sort of lower magnification. Maybe it's a, it's a dermatological condition, something that, you know, just the camera won't quite do, but you only want, you know, kind of like a, a, micro, or a magnifying glass level of, of magnification. And so we've also got a, got a prototype that has um, uh, less magnification and built-in illumination system. And, uh, you know, this, this is all great if it, if it works. So here's our... Here's our demonstration of um, uh, just a, a normal blood sample where, you know, here's on, uh, on your right is, you know, the um, blood smear with a, a standard lab quality microscope. And then on the left is the same sample uh, image through our, through our cell, sc cell scope system. So we're able to get, um, you know, real lab quality, clinical quality, diagnostic images with this, with this system. Um, and that you know, and this this is a this is a healthy sample, but you know some of these diseases that we want to look at, like like malaria, um, are are harder to do. Um, but we've also demonstrated that we can get these samples to work. So this is th this is a malaria sample that that we got from some collaborators at UCSF, and we've been able to to um, you know produce these diagnostic quality images of the malaria parasites within the blood cells. So. We can make it work in the lab. Uh, the, the, the next step is to refine it based on the actual in-the-field conditions. Um, and I, I got a chance to do a little bit of that this summer, going over to uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. I was working in a city with a star there called Goma. Uh, Goma's right on the border of um, Congo and Rwanda, in, in eastern Congo. And Goma is, uh, is a naturally beautiful city. It's right on uh, Lake Kivu. Um, uh, I'm here on behalf of the Goma Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> it's a, one of Africa's great lakes, it's, you know, gardens and flowers. And um, there's also a giant volcano and the remnants of their decade-long civil war and the you know, spillover of other regional conflicts that are, you know, present incredible challenges for, for um, any, any healthcare services in that, in that area. Um, and, there's, you know, this has also led to... Uh, huge numbers of, of both international refugees and internally displaced persons. The city that, that I was working in Goma is about 800,000, and they uh, had these internally displaced persons camps owing to you know, some of the, the uh, conflicts that had another 800,000 people living in, in, in these you know, very basic uh, conditions. And so there's a, a lot of reasons you might not want to go there, right? You know, there's... there's uh, there's violence, there's volcanoes, there's, there's, there's reasons why there's not a lot of doctors and uh, not a lot, of, uh, a lot of development infrastructure. So it's a little dark, but uh, this, is, this is me, your intrepid narrator, here on top of the volcano. Um, and, uh, you know, for maybe you guys aren't surprised, but uh, I, was, I was incredibly surprised that uh, we were able to make cell phone calls from on top of the volcano. <laughs> like, we climbed up this volcano, there's nothing around, it's, you know, like sulfur bubbling, the lava's down below, and one of my friends was, was calling the driver to get him to come pick us up. Uh, so, 
Well, there's not a lot of diagnostic infrastructure. There really is the, the infrastructure that's necessary for implementing this you know, cell phone-based technology. Um, and so, you know, just to sort of get a sense of, of what, the, what the need level was there, you know, this is, uh, I, was, I, was, I was talking to some people who do um, TB diagnostics in, in Goma. And Goma is really the, the, the biggest city in eastern Congo. And, you know, they, there's, in the, in the eastern Congo area, there's, there's you know, uh, millions of people. And this, this facility here, this, this one microscope, and as you can see, this, uh, this one note card, um, provide the uh, TB diagnostic capability for that whole region. You know, it's, it's, it's one guy with a microscope, not a lot of record keeping. You know, but, I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're doing really well with the, with the resources they have, but they were really excited to see um, what, what we were presenting. You know, they think this is, this is me giving a demo to um, some of the guys at the, at the Goma General Hospital talking about the, the applications for you know, doing, doing cell phone-based diagnostics. And they liked both you know, being able to uh, sort of transfer some of that burden, both you know, d having, having some of the diagnostics be automated, but also you know, being able to sort of be involved in the international collaboration, being able to you know, be part of re research partnerships with, with people by being able to transmit the images. And I, I got a, a just incredibly positive response to, um, to the presentations there. So just to just kind of wrap it up, I mean, the, the idea here is that the cell phone infrastructure is great in a lot of places where there's not a lot else. You know, in Congo, there's 300 miles of roads, um, but cell phone signals everywhere. And so if we, can, if we can use that infrastructure that exists to be able to take, you know, take these, these sophisticated diagnostics to people who, who need them desperately, I think it, it, it could have a tremendous impact. Um, this is some of the team that's working on it. Uh, I'm, uh, the group's led by Professor Dan Fletcher in bioengineering on campus. Um, some of the other people have had a lot of help from, from Ravi and Citrus. And uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, if you have any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to address them during the panel. And you can check out our website, cellscope.berkeley. Thanks.